All right, <clears throat> this is the second video for lesson 4.2. We're gonna do some examples of using CPCTC. Remember CPCTC stands for corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, and you're only allowed to use it after you have congruent triangles. All right, so what you need to do is copy this down, and if you think you know what you're doing already with this proof idea, go ahead and do this whole proof on your own, and then just watch and see if you did it correctly. If you aren't quite sure how to use CPCTC, at least try to prove that these two triangles are congruent. This triangle over here on the left and this triangle over here on the right. If you can at least do that much, you're really close to being done. If you're still struggling with proofs in general, then just follow along, okay? So get that picture copied down no matter what. I'm gonna you know, pause the video if you need to like usual, and I'm gonna get started here right away, okay? So here we go, we have statements and reasons. All right, so we're gonna start off with our givens, so M, N, is congruent to MP. That was a given. Remember, we need to mark up our picture. So MN and MP get the same marks. And remember, off to the side, we like to write S for side or A for angle. Right? I also know that NO is congruent to PO. Step two. Some people put both givens into step one. I'm okay with that, but it's a little harder to write your S's and your A's off to the side if you're doing that. So there's a second side. I'm gonna mark this picture up as well. So I'm gonna put two marks and I'm gonna put two marks. Now, every now and then it's good to stop in your proof and ask yourself, do I have enough information to prove my triangles are congruent? Right now, the answer is no, I don't. I only have two sides. Two sides is not enough. So I have to look at the picture and ask myself, is there another thing that would be really easy to figure out? And in this case, there is. See this MO right here? Okay, what do we know about MO? Some of you are starting to figure out how to use this stuff. MO has to be congruent to itself. MO has to be congruent to MO. And anytime we say that, remember we use the reflexive property of congruence. So I'm gonna put an S off to the side, okay? I'm gonna mark up my picture. And then once again, I'm gonna ask myself, is three sides enough to say my triangles are congruent? Hopefully you're thinking, yes, it is. So I'm gonna say my triangles are congruent now in step four. So does not matter how you name the first triangle. Let's go ahead and just name the left triangle and we'll go with MPO. Triangle MPO is congruent to triangle. We have to get it right. So one mark, two marks, one mark, two marks, MNO, MNO. And what's our reason? Well, that's why we write this stuff off to the side. It helps with our reason. We double check our picture for the order, side, side, side. Side, side, side of the order doesn't really matter. Can't mix it up, but if you have side, angle, side, or angle, side, angle, or angle, angle, side, make sure you're always checking your order. Keep in mind that side, side, side is a postulate. Okay. The only two that are theorems are angle, angle, side, and HL. Now, if you can do these four steps, you're doing pretty good. That means you're understanding the prior three lessons pretty well, 4-4, four, 4-5, four, four, and 4-6. Now we're gonna use this 4.7 thing. Angle P, right there in the middle. Angle N, right there in the middle. They're in the same position, they're corresponding. Corresponding parts. These parts are just happen to be angles. Parts can be sides or angles. All right, corresponding parts of congruent triangles, yes. I proved the triangles were congruent. So what do we know about corresponding parts of congruent triangles? We know they also have to be congruent. So we can say angle P is congruent to angle N, and that's that newest thing we've learned, CPCTC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. All right, let's take a look at another example. Okay, so go ahead and copy this picture down. We're gonna start off with a proof here in just a little bit with it. Okay, but get that picture copied down. All right, I'm gonna get started. If you didn't pause the video and you don't have it copied down yet, make sure you do that. So I got my statements and reasons set up. I'm gonna start with AC is perpendicular to BD. That's a given. I cannot write anything off to the side because I didn't say there were any congruent sides. This doesn't say congruent, it says perpendicular. I didn't say there were any congruent angles, okay? Step two says AB is congruent to AD, that's also a given. 
Okay, let's mark that in our picture. AB is congruent to AD. That is a side of my two triangles. So I'm going to put an S right here for side. Now, what do we know about perpendicular lines? Okay, and it's something we learned a couple lessons ago. Perpendicular lines form what? What do perpendicular lines form? AC is perpendicular to BD. What's going on here? Well, we've got some right angles. Now, we can't just say angle C, because I don't know if you're talking about angle ACD, angle ACB, or even the straight angle, angle BCD. All right, so we have to be specific with using three letters. So angle ACD, that's this one right here, ACD. Remember, the vertex has to be in the middle. And angle ACB, that's this one over on this side, ACB, vertex in the middle, are right angles. And that comes from that theorem we learned. It didn't have a name, but it said perpendicular lines form four right angles. Now, we only listed two of them because that's all we really needed, and that's all that is really in our picture. Now, I still can't put anything off to the side over here because I didn't say anything is congruent yet. But what do we know about all right angles? We know all right angles are congruent. All right. Now, some of you were thinking all right angles equal 90. That's true. But remember, we want to say that things are congruent. So we're going to say that these angles are congruent. What's our reason we're allowed to say that all right angles are congruent to each other? Well, that was the right angle congruence theorem. Remember, you can do some kind of shortcuts here as long as it's very obvious what you mean by it. So an angle symbol and a congruent symbol, I definitely know what you mean. We can put an A off to the side. Let's come back up here and mark up our picture. So I've got these angles that are both right angles. Now, is there anything else? I don't have any more givens, but is there anything else in this picture that would have to be congruent from the left triangle over to the right triangle? If you aren't sure, just kind of make some guesses. All right, so BC congruent to CD. I don't really have a good reason to say that. It didn't say anything about bisecting or midpoint. Okay, angle B and angle D, well, that's what I'm trying to prove at the end, so it's probably not going to be easy to do at the beginning. Angle A, which angle A? Angle BAC, congruent to angle DAC. I don't really have a good reason there. Once again, they didn't say anything about bisecting an angle. What about AC? What is AC congruent to? Well, AC on this triangle is congruent to AC on this triangle. So AC is congruent to AC. Reflexive property of congruence. If you haven't figured out how to use the reflexive property of congruence yet, you need to have a lot of studying to do. Okay, that's a side. I put S. I mark it up in my picture. Now, the order in the proof isn't the order you always use. So this looks like it might be side, angle, side. But we always have to check our picture. And remember, for side, angle, side, the angle has to be between the two sides. Do I have an angle marked as congruent between these two sides? No, I don't. So this isn't side, angle, side. It's actually side, side, angle. But remember, side, side, angle does not work unless the angle is a right angle. Is this angle here a right angle? Yes. So what do we rename this one? Because remember, side, side, angle doesn't work unless the angle is a right angle. The angle is a right angle, so it does work, but we don't call it side-side angle. We call it HL. So I'm going to go ahead and write that as my reason. HL congruence theorem. This one's a theorem. All right. So HL congruence theorem. Remember, H is the hypotenuse. AD and AB are hypotenuses of these right triangles. They're across from the right angles. AC is one of the legs, and that's all you need is one leg. Okay. So let's name our triangles. Remember, the order you name the first triangle in does not matter. So let's just go with ACB. Triangle ACB is congruent to triangle. Now, got to match it up. So what matches with ACB? You guys think, hopefully you said ACD. We already have our reason written down here. All right, now remember, we were trying to prove this. B. D. See how they're in the same position? Remember, same position means corresponding. So angle B has to be congruent to angle D because this newest thing we've learned, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. They are in the corresponding parts. They are in congruent triangles, so therefore they have to be congruent as well. All right? We're going to do one more proof and we're done. Copy this one down. 
So you have x, uh, v, w, x, y, and z. X is the midpoint of w, z, and v, y. So it's the midpoint of w, z, and it's the midpoint of v, y. And we're going to prove that we have some parallel lines, w, v, and y, z. Okay, copy it down. I'm going to start the proof here in just a second. All right, here we go. X is the midpoint of W, Z, and V, Y, given. Now, I can't write anything off to the side. I can only write an S or an A when I've said something is congruent, and I haven't said anything is congruent yet. All right, well, what does midpoint mean? It means a point in the middle that makes two congruent pieces. So if X is the midpoint of W, Z, what has to be congruent? Well, W, X has to be congruent to X, Z. I'm gonna go ahead and mark that up and write it down. W, X is congruent to X, Z because of the definition of a midpoint. Or midpoint, a point in the middle that creates two congruent segments. Okay, and since that was a side, I'm going to write S over here off to the side. Okay, well, X was also the midpoint of VY. So that means VX has to be congruent to XY. VX is congruent to XY. Once again, definition of a midpoint. And once again, that's a side. I remember I said every now and then just stop and ask yourself, do I have enough information? Is two sides enough to prove I have congruent triangles? No, it isn't. Okay, so think about our, our things again. Side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, um, angle, angle, side, and HL. Well, two sides, that's a possibility. That's a possibility. And that's a possibility. Those aren't going to work. HL requires me, though, to have right angles. Because remember, hypotenuse only happens in a right triangle. And I don't have any right angles here, so I'm probably not going to use this one. So I've got it narrowed down to these two. So either I need another side or I need the included angle. So let's start with the sides, Y, Z, and W, V. Do I have any good reason to think they're congruent? It's not reflexive. It doesn't say anything about them being congruent as a given. Definitely not a midpoint. They're not even on the same line. So I can't really think of a good reason. So let's focus on this one instead. Angle. Remember, it has to be the angle that's included between the sides. Well, which angle is between these two sides? Well, it's this angle right here. A lot of you want to say angle X. But if all you do is write angle X for this angle, I'm going to mark it wrong because I don't know which angle X you're talking about. There are four of them. One, two, three, and four. Not including the straight angles. Okay? So... Which angle X? Angle Y, X, Z. Now, do I have a good reason to say that it's congruent to this angle over here? Hopefully you're thinking yes. Okay, so let's write it down. Angle Y, X, Z is congruent to Y, X, Z goes with W, X, V. So I put the angle symbol, W, X, V. It's a really bad congruent symbol, I'm sorry. Okay, why? What would be our reason? Why can we say that these two angles up here are congruent? They're right across from each other where these two lines meet. It's a vertical angle theorem. If you don't know your vertical angle theorem, you are going to struggle a lot. Okay, that was an angle. I put A for angle. Now, remember, this order doesn't really matter. It's the order in the picture that matters, and that is side angle, side order, so we're good. Now we need to name some congruent triangles. So it doesn't matter what order you do this one. I'm going to go VXW. Triangle VXW is congruent to triangle. Now, if I went VXW, I did the two segment followed by the one segment. So I can't go ZXY. I can, however, go YXZ. Two segment VXW to one segment. YXZ. Okay? YXZ. And what was our reason? Side, angle, side, congruence, postulate. Now we're not done. Remember, we were trying to prove that these are parallel. Now I can't use CPC, TC, to say these are parallel. Doesn't say anything about that. But I can use it to say something is congruent. Like maybe angle V and angle Y. Okay, 
V is first, Y is first, they're in the same position. So angle V is congruent to angle Y. Our reason, C, P, C, T, C. Okay, let's talk about those angles. This angle right here, and this angle right here. They both touch line VY. They're in between WV and YZ. They're on opposite sides of this transversal, so they're alternate interior angles. If the alternate interior angles are congruent, do the lines have to be parallel? Yes, that's what we learned back in chapter 3. So I do have parallel lines. WV is parallel to YZ. And our reason is the alternate interior angle. But remember, for proving the lines are parallel, we have to include what word? Converse theorem. And there we go, that's our proof. All right, so these are the types of proofs you're going to be doing using CPCTC. So make sure you watch both videos, come into class with your notes, so that you can take that short quiz over this lesson.